we're not very good at. We're very good as hoteliers at seeing, you know, I can have some, I can give more or less tangible products to my customers. But what we're not good at seeing is what is the value of all of those things around that? What is the value of a table inside versus a table outside versus a table on the, this is the terrace, okay, and this is the fantastic view. And we've all got restaurants and we have many restaurants with the view of the map of do we have differential offers here for those tables with the premium view versus those tables on the inside versus those tables on the, on the second row versus those tables that are inside? You know, I know when I come to ski here in Zermatt that it's first come first served. If you're lucky you get this table, if you're not you have to go inside. And we know according to the weather as well the opportunity changes. If we have a cold wind here in Zermatt for example up at the top Nobody wants to sit outside, everybody wants to go inside and get warm. So are we changing our prices and our products based on the weather? Because the weather has an impact on demand. All right? So it's about mindset and mentality and understanding the value of our space when the weather is good, when the weather is not so good. For example, last we have a room and the receptionist um, took us to our room and she said, and your room has a view of the matter on you. Wow, <coughs> fantastic. The only problem was, when we opened our curtains this morning, we couldn't see it. Uh, so again, we had that expectation. Now, that's not anybody's fault, that's the weather, you know, but you know at certain times you can't see the matter on the floor, right? And if a customer is coming for that experience and they don't get it, then they're going to be extremely disappointed. So we have to think of those days where it's sunny and there's a clear view of that rock, and when it isn't. There's a different demand for this table here. And we need to be aware of that and the temperature and all of those different things. So we need to somehow use the technology to have some flexibility in the things that we're offering. But again, it's about mentality. because And, and, and also, it's about willingness to embrace complexity. Because when things are continually changing, we've got lots of prices and lots of products, it's much more complicated. So if we don't have the technology to support that, it's too complicated and why do we have to change? We've always done things that way. We have to change because the customer is expecting us to change and the customer is expecting, as a customer, I want this table. You know, if I'm coming to Zermatt one weekend of the year, I want that table. Can you please help me get it? And you can help me getting it by saying, Mrs. Varini, would you be interested already to reserve that table? so that you can be sure to have that experience you're expecting. Um, I'm going to be willing to pay more for that because I want to really maximize that time I have here in this destination. So there is definitely opportunity in the customers. You know, customers that come to the matter, come to Zermatt, they want to have a lovely view of the Matterhorn during their stay and they have to have a table inside because this is already taken because they didn't come early enough. It's like when you go to a beach resort and you go down to the swimming pool somebody's already put a towel on all the beds and you don't get a bed. Give me the opportunity to reserve my bed. I'm going to be happy to pay more for that. On EasyJet, when you go, you can choose your seat in advance or not. If you don't, want, if you don't care where you sit, not a problem. But if you want an aisle seat, you have the opportunity to buy and choose your aisle seat by paying eight euros extra already before. And for people like me, that's really important. Because I'll let you into a secret, I have claustrophobia, and for some reason I panic if I have a seat by the window or the middle seat. I have to have the R seat on the um, And so for me, I will always pay extra for that. And so that's an opportunity. Now if you don't give me that opportunity, then I can't possibly give you that extra money that maybe would be quite nice as a business to optimize profit. Right? Because there's no cost associated with that either. What cost? is associated with letting somebody rather than someone else have that lovely technology to just do that. There's no additional cost to that if you have the technology to actually support taking reservations online. So clearly there are opportunities. The lessons to learn from this are there are opportunities and we don't always recognize them because we're used to always doing things in a certain way. And as humans, you know, we can't possibly see everything. So we need to maybe rely a little bit more on technology to collect the data, analyze the data, and show us where are the opportunities. 
in addition to those opportunities that we already see um, as managers, because the system isn't going to be able to see all the opportunities. We're also the system doesn't know that it's suddenly sunny outside and you can see another one, does it? Right? We're the ones that can do that. You know why a lingi won't one? I don't know if you know anything about sailing, but a lingi why you had a Swiss boat that won the America's Cup. They don't even have a sea in Switzerland. You don't even have a sea. Right? And Switzerland beat all of the other countries um, that have a sea and are much supposed to be much more expert in sailing. And that's because Alinghi relied a lot more on new technology than all of the other companies. They had special sails developed by EPFL and they also had special technology to actually work with to combine the, the, the weather forecast and the wind terms of the direction of the sails. And we can compare revenue management to sailing. Why? Because when you're sailing, um, you're trying to position your sails in the best way to capture the wind in order to move forward as fast as possible. Right? But you can't see the wind. You know, my husband is a sailor um, and sometimes I go sailing with him and I'm steering the boat and he says, steer into the wind. I'm like, what does that mean? Where is the wind? I I have no idea what that means, because I can't see the wind. And that's the same way in hotels, we can't see the demand. We want to steer and make sure we have the products available based on the demand. And we can compare the demand to the wind. It can't be seen. <coughs> we 